In today's English lesson, we are going to learn English at an American fireworks store. And the first term I would like to teach you is buy two, get one free. It's exactly what it sounds like. You need to buy two items and then you get another one free. Now, the important thing to know about buying two, get one free in the United States is that that free item, the one you get for free, is always going to be the least expensive. The one that costs the least amount of money. You can't buy two items for a dollar each and get a $2 item free. It doesn't work that way. But in the United States, you will see a lot of sales like that. Another common one is buy one, get one. Buy one, get one free. Sometimes you'll see the letters B-O-G-O. -O. Buy one, get one. Hey, and before we get into the store, there are three vocabulary words I would like to teach you. The first one is shipping container. Those big things behind me, we call them shipping containers in English. You see that vehicle back there with the wheels? We call that a forklift. And over here, we call these things pallets. Do you know what these things are called? They're called shopping carts or just carts. This store is so big, the fireworks are so big that you might actually need a shopping cart to take them all to your car. As I'm walking through the store and teaching, you might hear some popping noises. Don't fear, there are no fireworks actually going off in the store, yet we sometimes use that phrasal verb, going off when talking about fireworks. No, there are just TVs along the wall showing fireworks going off. This one is called warning avalanche ahead. Do you know what an avalanche is? Think about a mountain. Think about a mountain full of snow. When that snow starts to melt, all of the snow might come down at once. It's super dangerous, but that's what we call an avalanche. What about this one, selfie moment? You probably know what a selfie is. It's, it's when you take a picture of yourself, probably with your cell phone. I'm gonna take a selfie of myself right now. See, it's hard to do one-handed. All right, that's what it looks like. You know, I have to take selfies all the time for this YouTube channel and I have to make really strange faces. They sell gender reveal baseballs here. Do you know what a gender reveal is? Gender, it just means male, female, boy or girl. A lot of parents in the United States before they have a baby, they find out the baby's gender. And then to announce it to their whole family, they will have what's called a gender reveal party. And that place um, is where all of their friends and family will learn if that couple is having a boy or a girl. A long, long time ago, I actually did an English lesson at a gender reveal party. It was one of my first lessons. It's probably really bad, but I will leave a link to it right up there if you want to watch it. Let's talk about that term right there, hardcore pyro. Couple things going on there. If somebody is hardcore about something, it means they really like it. Hopefully you are an hardcore English student, hardcore English student. But there's also something called pyro, and that means someone who really likes fire. And if somebody really likes fire, 
they'll probably like fireworks. Um, sometimes we use the term pyromaniac for someone who really loves fire. Oh, evil eye. If somebody gives you the evil eye, that means they are very mad at you. They give you like an angry face. I'll try to give you an angry eye right now. This firework is called pigskin. If you ever see pigskin in English, it probably has nothing to do with the animal, probably more to do with a football. Another name for a football is a pigskin. And there are a lot of customers in this store. I feel really weird teaching English. All right, this firework right here is called game time, but I want to teach you a different term, and that is scantily clad. Now, a lot of guys probably buy fireworks, and to see some women who are scantily clad, it might make them buy fireworks a little bit more. Scantily clad, it means not wearing a whole lot of clothing, and it looks like those ladies right there are wearing basically bathing suits or something. They still have clothing on, it's just not a whole lot. Scantily clad. All right, this firework right here is called a uh, peacock and it's named after the animal. Do you know the animal, a peacock? All right, this one is called trigger happy. If you ever hear that term in English, it means somebody is likely to shoot a gun. So let's say someone is robbing a bank, hopefully they aren't, but if they are trigger happy, you need to be very careful because they might shoot somebody or maybe even accidentally shoot somebody if they're trigger happy. Police officers, I mean, it's a really tough job and a lot of times their life is on the line. Their life is in danger, but you probably don't want an officer who is trigger happy. You want them to make good decisions before they have to use their gun. All right, this one is called road rage. So kind of a, a lot of violence uh, in this lesson, but road rage right there. That is when somebody is driving and they get really mad at somebody else who is driving and it might even cause a fight. They might get out of their cars and start fighting. That would be road rage. Or maybe they just swear at each other as they're driving by. These are some of my favorite kind of fireworks. We call these things Roman candles. And behind me, it looks like there are some more items you could use at a gender reveal party. And for some reason, it looks like there are some fireworks with a shark theme. They have sharks in common. All right, in English, we call that type of animal right there a saber tooth tiger. Unfortunately, those animals are no longer around. In English, we would say they are extinct. All right, this next part, I need to concentrate a little more. So I'm going to leave the store and there won't be as many customers watching me film. Uh, we need to talk about uh, if fireworks are legal or not. So it gets a little bit tricky. Where I live, in the city that I live in, and especially my neighborhood where my house is, it is never legal for me to shoot off fireworks at my house. Now, there are parts of my town that don't have as many people living there, so we might say it's a little more sparsely populated, 
some really big words. Just not as many people live there. The houses are further apart. Well, in that part of my city, you can shoot off fireworks. So for me to shoot them off at my house, it's illegal. If I have a friend who lives in a different part of the city where it's less populated, not as populated, it's sparsely populated, there are fewer people living there, I could probably shoot them off. But I should probably check with that friend first before shooting fireworks off at their house. All right, as I was filming that last part, I noticed it looks like there was an old racetrack here maybe for like little go-karts. It doesn't look like they use this racetrack anymore though, unfortunately, but could be somebody living there in an RV. That uh, vehicle behind me, it's called an RV. Also, this store will actually ship fireworks to you if you live in the United States. So in the description below, there's a link to their website. And if you want, they'll ship you fireworks. Just be careful. Please let me know in the comments, does the thought of setting off fireworks scare you? Are you scared of fireworks? I don't know about you, but I have watched a lot of videos on YouTube of fireworks going really badly. And yes, they do scare me too. So whenever I set off fireworks, I always use the utmost caution when doing it. All right, that's the end of this lesson. If you like English lessons where I get out in the community and teach, right up there is an English lesson I did at an amusement park. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.